All right, let's work a vector problem here. I feel like old school here really shines on vector problems, and it's just as good in 3D. I can do spherical coordinates, but here we go. So we're going to do 75 in the I direction, 30 in the J, put that on the stack. And then we have a 50 newtons at negative 60 degrees. Notice it just dynamically converts that to rectangular. And the last one we need, we're going to need a unit vector and of this direction. It's going three this way and five down. So we're going to use three negative, five down. Put that on the stack, and then we're going to make a copy of it. Take the absolute value of it. The, the, this ABS hides under the vector menu. There may be a better way to get to it, but I, I didn't see it. So anyway, absolute value. There's our magnitude of the vector. And we divide. So there's our unit vector. And then we're going to do 40 newtons times that. So now we have our three vectors. Let's say we're going to store this one. So we'll put this into VC. And I'm just going to hit stow. That'll store that vector. And now I'm going to store this one. This would be vector B. Oops. Um, alpha. Messed that up. Alpha V lowercase b. Hit stow for store. And the last one will be alpha V A. Store it. So those are all in there. If I want to add them together, they're gone. So I'd have to go to my variables and then grab them. I think I just hit VA and it'll pop up. Yeah. All right. So VA. So it's a little different than the solver. So VA, VB, VC, and then add, add. And there's our result. Really, really cool how it works. And if you wanted like, oh, wait, I actually wanted that in polar. That's easy. You just shift and hit this polar and it'll, it'll dynamically switch it and say, oh, it's 92.6 at negative 31 degrees. Uh, really good at doing that. Let's, so I'm going to go back. So there's rectangle. It just bounces back. All right. Let's, uh, let's work it on here. So if we do, this is on our prime here. So our first vector is 75, 30. That's easy. Our next one, this is where I run into problems. I don't know. There's probably a better way to do it. If you use complex numbers, it's fine. But I have not been able to figure out how you incorporate a... Um, polar vector. It looks like it worked, but that is a one, to one by one vector with a complex number as its one value. And so best thing I know to do is grab that, get rid of these, turn it from complex into just 25 comma, and now that's fine. Like I said, there's got to be a better way. If you do it all in complex numbers, you can do it, but then that's limiting because it's two, you're stuck with two-dimensional. All right, this one's negative three and negative five, but then we also needed to, to get the unit vector of that, so we're going to divide by the magnitude or absolute value of, I'm going to select it, hit copy, so there you go, there's our unit vector, times 40. All right, so there we have our three vectors. Now, if we want to save those or store those, we could, we would just say, let's say I want to store that in, I already used A, B, and C earlier, so let's do D, E, and F. So this would be, let's go, let's just do them in order. So if we wanted to do D, we'd go up here, we'd hit copy, we'd stow into alpha V, and then I could do lowercase d, V, D, enter. Do you want to create a variable called that? Yes. Okay. And grab our next one that was here copy it stow alpha v b oops already forgot what it's doing uh e create it and then our last one's right here copy it stow into oops v wow i am struggling sorry probably time to eat F. You want to create a variable? Yes, I do. Now those are in memory, and if I want to add the three together, I could either type them in 
or I could just grab them from the stack. You know, I could just go up here and snag each one. That plus that plus that. There's our final result. That's probably the easiest way to do it.